Hello, and welcome to the Public Health Insider. I'm Casey Farm, Director of Alumni Relations for the College of Public Health and Human Sciences at Oregon State University Alumni Association. Hi, everyone. I'm Katherine Stroppel. I'm Director of Marketing and Communications for the College of Public Health and Human Sciences at Oregon State. In this episode of the Public Health Insider, we'll be looking at the topic of mentoring. So what does mentoring really mean and how do you find or become a mentor? How do you get the most from the mentor relationship? We'll answer these questions and more with our guests today. They are CPHHS Director of Student Engagement, Amy Riley, as well as mentor mentee pairing, Kendra Wise and Dita Hansen from Catalyst. That's the college's mentorship program for leadership development. Amy Riley is the Director of Student Engagement for the College of Public Health and Human Sciences. She joined the college back in January of 2018 and has worked in higher education since 2004 in various student services and support roles. She earned her bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Washington, a master's degree in distance education leadership from the University of wisconsin Platteville, and is currently working toward a doctorate of education degree in OSU's College of Education. Her work has consistently revolved around the development and operation of programs and services to support the success of university students. Kendra Wise is a two-time OSU alumna who earned her bachelor's degree in environmental science in 1997 and a master's degree in public health in 2004. At OSU, she worked as a graduate teaching assistant, an opportunity that kindled a love for mentoring and teaching undergraduate students. Kendra has been a California registered environmental health specialist for almost 20 years and has worked as a regulator and program supervisor at the local level for a decade. As an environmental health specialist, she specializes in food safety, recreational health, housing, body art, emergency sheltering operations, and emergency response for environmental health. Kendra currently teaches at her local community college, Santa Barbara City College. Dita Hansen is a third year student working toward a degree in public health with minors in statistics and Spanish, as well as a medical humanities certificate. She is also a case investigator with the Oregon State University OHA Sergi Epi Bench and is an undergraduate research assistant on the OSU flame retardant study. A reminder to, uh, for our webcast series is hosted by the OSU Alumni Association in collaboration with the OSU Foundation and the College of Public Health and Human Sciences. Following the panelists' presentation, we'll leave about, oh, I'll say about 25 to 30 minutes for your questions and answers. If you look now at the bottom of your screen, you will find a Q&A button. You are welcome to type as many questions as you'd like throughout the talk. And at the end of the presentation, our panelists will answer as many as they can before the end of the episode. Okay, I think we're ready to begin. So um, I would like to, at this time, invite Amy, Kendra, and Dita to join us um, by turning on their respective cameras and microphones as I put the program in their very, very capable hands. So please enjoy the presentation and we'll see you shortly for the audience Q&A at the end of the program. Amy, the floor is yours. Great, thank you so much, Catherine and Casey. Um, as you've already kind of got some introductions and what I'd like to do is um, share a few slides and just spend a few minutes talking about what is mentoring, why it is important, um, what are some of the benefits and the ways to get connected. Um, it's only going to be about 10 minutes, so that'll be fairly brief. What I really want to provide space for is an opportunity to chat with our mentor and our mentee who are joining us tonight. Um, and ask them some questions myself, maybe get the wheels turning and then turn it over to those who have logged in to answer your questions as well. Um, so I am just going to pull up uh, some slides and talk to you just a minute. Okay. Um, so uh, mentoring, right? What is it and why does it matter? Um, I pulled this quote out and put it at the bottom of the screen just to start us off because I think it really captures the spirit of mentoring um, in terms of of working together and the power of um, supportive relationships. And it's, if you wanna travel fast, travel alone. And if you want to travel far, travel together. Um, so with that, I'm gonna move through some of this. I do wanna start with a land acknowledgement. Um, this is the standard land acknowledgement from OSU, which I will read. And then I'm gonna provide some additional context before we move into talk about mentoring and student support. 
Oregon State University in Corvallis is located within the traditional homelands of the Marys River or Ampanehu Band of Kalapuya. Following the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855, Kalapuya people were forcibly removed to reservations in Western Oregon. Today, living descendants of these people are part of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ron Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians. I'd also like to share which may be less well known to folks who uh, have been hearing land acknowledgements, um, a little bit about our history as a university and how it pertains to this. Um, for those who are familiar with history of higher ed and don't study it like I do, um, there is land grant universities in every state in our country, which were um, gifted to the states by the federal government to fund. So they, they funded our school, um, but how they did that was through the acquisition and sale of indigenous lands. And this chart actually shows specifically where, what lands funded the development of Oregon State University. There were 600 different pieces of land um, that were seized and sold to fund our university. And I, we have an obligation as a land grant university to support communities across the state. And I think this is just a good reminder that um, we need to be really intentional in how we support all of our communities and give back to the people of Oregon um, and really also support those students who may be um, traditionally underrepresented in higher education and mentoring is a great way to do that um, in terms of giving back. So just some, some history um, with land acknowledgements and, and, our, and our place with that at OSU. So again, this is what I'm hoping to cover. It will be brief because I wanna spend as much time as possible on voice for our participants, but we'll talk about what is mentoring, what are some of the benefits and how can you get involved if you're interested in mentoring. So there's not a consistent definition of what mentoring is. You can look at 20 different books or articles and find 20 different definitions. Um, but this at the top is, I think captures, captures it as well as we could. So it's a relationship between two people where the more experienced person is committed to providing developmental support to the less experienced person. Um, and that can happen in so many different ways. There is longer term mentoring, shorter term mentoring, personal mentorship, peer mentorship, um, academic mentorship, and professional mentorship focused in um, professional goal setting and leadership development. And if we look at mentoring for leadership development, which is the Catalyst program really focuses on that, is a long-term one-on-one dynamic process of role modeling, reflection, um, with the purpose to help the mentee build skills and self-confidence, um, and really just, just grounded in personal and pre professional development. So that is kind of the foundation of, of our focus in the Catalyst program. It really kind of checks all of those boxes, but there are a lot of different ways that mentoring can show up. So for those who might be interested, what I would say is it doesn't have to be a formally structured program. It doesn't have to be a long-term program. Um, the focus is largely in support and creating relationships and helping somebody work towards their goals. That's really, I think, the, the foundation of mentorship to keep in mind, but it can show up in very different ways. Um, and again, these are some of the pieces that show up typically in mentoring. So psychological and emotional support, and that doesn't necessarily mean oversharing or crossing professional boundaries. I think you can still just by being present and supportive can provide psychological and emotional support as a mentor. Um, that doesn't mean that you need to be a counselor or engage in mental health conversations, but it really has impacts on mentees in terms of psychological and emotional support. Um, support for setting goals and choosing career paths, academic subject knowledge and role modeling. A lot of this is really just simply being present and sharing experience um, and, and showing students what this could look like in their future, um, especially again for our first generation low income underrepresented students, um, finding ways to give them that representation and that, that role modeling of what life could look like with a higher education and moving into the career path of their choice. There are a ton of benefits and they killed me to only put like five on here. 
Um, but these are the high points, I think, you know, support, guidance, help making those important decisions um, is a huge benefit for mentees. So that's what our mentors can offer. Um, there's a lot of research around improved academic outcomes, specifically retention and graduation. So students who are engaged in what we call high impact practices are more likely to continue their degree program and graduate. It's just like foundational research will defend that. And so there's a, there's a big um, component of just supporting the academic success of our students through mentoring. There's also some research that's been done by Gallup poll that looks at folks who engaged in mentoring during their undergraduate experience and what that looks like afterwards. And they found that um, students who had a mentor during their undergraduate experience were more than twice as likely to be engaged in work. And that means they're actually doing work that they enjoy and that they are good at. And so there are some professional outcomes there. Um, they're also nearly twice as likely to be thriving just generally as humans. So they find they have more purpose, they're more financially secure, um, their social circles and their community for their physical health. All of those components are reported as being higher for students who have engaged in mentoring or have had the support of a mentor. So there are really um, benefits that move beyond simply helping our students graduate. Um, increased leadership and sense of self and increased confidence. And I can speak anecdotally just from the students that I've worked with. Um, we do a year long program and the confidence they have in their ability to be in professional situations and meet their goals increases tenfold um, over the course of the year. And it's really fun to see in my position. There's also a ton of benefits for mentors, which I feel like we don't always talk about a lot. And we'll get into this a little bit more when we have a chat to chat with both Kendra and Dita. Um, but this is really a shared leadership experience, being able to support someone in this way and facilitate conversations and coach through situations um, really helps to improve the leadership development of our mentors. So it's a great professional development opportunity and leadership development opportunity for mentors. Um, there's also research that shows increased generativity or just like a willingness to provoke, promote well-being of younger generations starts to um, come up with folks who mentor. They start to get more and more interested and engaged in supporting those that are coming behind them. Uh, increased self-awareness, renewed sense of mission or purpose. I see this a lot with mentors who say, I, I feel like I have the energy in my field. Um, I'm more excited about it, getting to talk with folks that are excited about this work, and also just having the ability to connect with the upcoming professionals in your field and, and make those early career connections. Um, we have tremendously bright students here, and they're going to be working with folks in the very near future, and being able to meet some of them early on is a real benefit. So there are two ways right now to get involved. Um, I have been running the Catalyst program for we're wrapping up the fifth year. Um, we've served over 400 students, which is phenomenal, and our students are doing great. It's a year long program. Um, we start at the beginning of each school year and students have just one meeting a month with their mentor. So in terms of mentor commitment, it's very reasonable. Um, it should be pretty easy to fit into busy schedules. Pardon me, but it still has all of those impacts that we talked about, just that one hour per month. Um, the students outside of those meetings are doing weekly curriculum with me as an instructor. We're talking about professional development, soft skill development, leadership, career planning, exploration. All of those things are happening on the back end in the course site each week. And they, a lot of those topics show up in the conversations with mentors. Um, we work with all volunteer mentors, both alumni and community partners. So our alumni are always encouraged and welcome, but we also just welcome general volunteers from local organizations, nonprofits, medical communities, whoever wants to support students and has a relevant um, overlapping career interest or something like that, we will try to find a place for them because like I said, students always can use mentors. Um, the other thing to know about the Catalyst program specifically uh, as a mentor is that these are student-led meetings. And what that means for mentors is that the students are tasked with coming prepared with discussion topics and questions, um, working with the mentor to develop things to talk about or explore. And so the onus is not, does not fall on the shoulders of the mentor in this case. They're present, they're supportive, they're providing resources and suggestions, but the students are really leading the relationship in this program. 
Um, and again, that supports leadership development as well. We can talk about getting involved, but the best thing to do, I put the website um, at the bottom of this slide. There's an online application for both students and mentors. So if there's any interest in participating, you can go right to the Catalyst website and submit a mentor application. We take those throughout the year and get started in um, October, late September, early October of each school year. The other option, which is new, and this is not a great picture, but I thought I would show what it looks like, um, is our new platform, OSU Connections, which Casey can talk much more about, I'm sure. But this is a way for alumni to connect right now and hopefully students in the near future if they're not there yet. But when you set up your profile in OSU Connections, there's this space to offer help. And you can check off all of the boxes and all of the ways in which you welcome people to contact you. So it could be advice regarding industry or helping create networking connections, job shadowing. Um, if you are interested in connecting maybe more informally outside of the structure of a program like Catalyst, this is a great way to show students and other professionals in our alumni network that you are accessible and willing to connect. So if you're not on the platform yet, I would encourage you to use it. And if you're on there but haven't set up these um, settings, I would encourage you to go in and think about how you would be willing to connect with folks if they reached out to you. And the website is at the bottom here as well. So again, a very brief overview. I'm going to stop my screen sharing. And then we're going to just have a conversation because I think um, that's more fun than looking at my slides. I've got great people here today. So what I'll do for Kendra and Dita is have you unmute yourselves. Um, and maybe just to, to get us started, Kendra and then Dita, tell us about um, how long you've been when how long you've been with the program or when you participated, because Kendra's been doing this forever with me. Um, and Dita just did with the one year, but tell me when you participated in Catalyst um, and just maybe what the experience was like for you and generally, and then I'll have some more specific questions. Okay, thank you. So I have been a mentor with the Catalyst program since it started, since its first year. So we're finishing up my fifth year. And in a couple of those years, I had two mentees. So I've had seven mentees total in that five year period. Um, and I think for me, what made me start as a mentor with Catalyst and why I I'm so happy to do it every year is two reasons. First, I get to meet really interesting people and have monthly conversations with them about a topic that we're both really excited about. And I really enjoy talking to people and hearing their stories. And I really enjoy teaching and 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 being with people who are exploring new areas. And that's what an undergraduate is doing. So that's really fun. The other reason that I mentor is because I had outstanding support from teachers and faculty and individuals in private industry and the public sector when I was an undergraduate and graduate student at Oregon State. And that's not the type of gift that you can pay back to the person who gave it to you, right? There's nothing that, that I feel that I, I cannot say thank you enough to the people who mentored me to make up for their time and attention because it was so valuable to me as a student. But I can transfer that gift to somebody else who needs it. And so um, I really enjoy the mentorship process, but it also provides me an opportunity to pass on the gift that I was given by all of the people who invested in me during my undergraduate and early and mid professional career. Thanks, Kendra. Yeah, so um, I was a mentee of Kendra last year with the program. Um, I think my kind of biggest reason for looking into mentoring is, of course, um, I have a multitude of options to do one of our requirements for OSU, and I chose mentoring. <laughs> um, but I also, um, it was also in the period of the summer where COVID-19 started, um, and I was kind of looking for guidance as to what I wanted to do. And um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty with the COVID-19 pandemic. And since we've been online, um, I actually started the program in the fall after um, COVID-19 happened. And so um, my main kind of instigator into wanting to be a mentee and um, um, why I'm so thankful that I'm a mentee of Kendra is just because um, it helps with a lot of kind of beginner understanding of what you kind of want to do for the later years of your undergraduate um, program 
And I was not 100% sure about cert certain things that I am certain about now because of the mentee program. Thank you. One of the things I hear, um, I talk to people about this program often because, of course, I'm, I'm proud of it and all of the people that participate. Um, and I say, oh, gosh, we've got such a great group of mentors this year. And, you know, we've got 60 or 70 this year who are volunteering. And they say, what do you give them? <laughs> and I say, nothing. Um, <laughs> they just do it because they're such good humans. But what I hear most often is, um, I wish I had this when I was in school or before I started my career, because Kendra, I think you were enormously lucky to have had the support that you had. Mm -hmm. um, most mentors that I speak with did not have that experience and they kind of fumbled through figuring it out um, and see a lot of value in, in giving back in that way. Um, and then once they do it the first year, they, they realize that there are some of those additional benefits that we talked about and have continued on. Um, so thank you for that. One of the things I, I hear from students and from mentors is, is about navigating that first meeting. When you find somebody and you're going to connect with them, um, it might feel a little bit intimidating or awkward or um, it's like going on a blind date sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your first meeting. Um, how do you approach getting to know each other and kind of starting that mentoring relationship? What did that look like for you all? So Dina, what do you remember from our first meeting? Um, I actually looked at our email receipts just to like see what happened because it was over a year ago, um, almost two years now actually. Um, but I remember by instruction from the class is to just send out an initial like um, email just to say hi. Um, and then ask you when you're available and whatnot. And I remember our main kind of topic of discussion is kind of expectations and what we kind of wanted to do and um, what expectations you had for me and kind of what I wanted to get out of the program and kind of like mutual understanding of how we were going to go forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember us also talking a lot about agenda meetings and um, just kind of mutual expectations as to like what we were looking for. How about you? No, that's so that's what I remember too. And I I have a little bit of an advantage because I had have I've had multiple years of first meetings, right? But I think what the, the, those things are always really important. So we're we're forming a new group of two people, and that group of we're gonna have some norms, right? Things that we do consistently. And so talking about the agenda, um, talking about what our relationship, what like you said, like what we're what we want to get out of it, what we're going to put into it. Um, and that also helps set some boundaries, right? A little bit of some boundary setting in, in healthy, appropriate ways that help us both understand like, okay, so this is what this relationship is going to at least start out as, right? Those are sort of initial operating instructions. And then I also remember talking a little bit about ourselves, right? Getting to know each other as individuals, not just a mentor and a mentee, but talking a little bit about hobbies, um, what our life experiences had been like to date, what our um, you know, what we what we were interested in in public health, what brought us to public health. And I think that 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 conversation helps um, make me may, at least help for me as a mentor helps me sort of understand, oh, like, why, why, what are you into? Right? Why? Why are you here? What do you find interesting? And so that when I'm giving examples or talking about my life, I can think about the things that relate most closely to the life that you currently live, but to build sort of a common ground and show common interests. Um, and then also just also to share maybe a little bit about me in a way that shows like, I was thinking about how to describe this and it like the first day of school when you were in third grade, if you were lucky, like I was, your mom packed four cookies, not just two. Um, and she said, or like when you went to a new school, like sixth grade or whatever it was, and she said, okay, so find somebody who seems nice and like to get to know better and at lunch, offer them a cookie. <laughs> and, and and so like you know you'd sit down with your lunchbox and you'd offer someone a cookie and they might not like that type of cookie or they might not want a cookie but the fact that you offered a cookie means oh this is a person with whom who wants to have a relationship because we don't share high value food like cookies with just anybody right um and so i kind of feel like as a mentor i always want to have a cookie that i offer to my mentee during our first conversation to say hey you know this is maybe a little bit about me that's Maybe I don't um, 
usually share with professional acquaintances on first, you know, thing about a particular type of food I want to learn how to cook or a goal that I have or a new book that I just read. Um, things that are a little bit personal, but not inappropriately personal <laughs> um, that can kind of show a little bit of like, oh, I want, I want, you know, I want to be friends also. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, and I think you alluded to this a little bit um, and I and I shared a bit about of it in terms of how is mentoring different. I think that one of the benefits of mentoring is that you do have a chance to create more of a relationship with somebody, right, to foster mm -hmm. um, those conversations that can really lead to change and growth. Um, and, and we've talked about this previously, but I think a big part of being able to be vulnerable and have those conversations is establishing some trust, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I would love to know kind of your thoughts on how important is trust in mentoring and what are some ways that both parties can help to foster that? Yeah. Um... I think I can speak a little to this. I, for me, trust was um, kind of what, like you said, Kendra also alluded to, is just kind of sharing a bit about our personal lives and um, kind of our, our lifestyles and um, kind of, you know, making a mutual understanding of it's a safe space that we're talking in and um, it's um, a space where questions are, um, you know, always welcome. Mm -hmm. um, I think also, me and Kendra, we kind of were like setting the expectations. And for me, that was really important just because um, I know that we were felt comfortable sharing our numbers like with one another if we ever like had an emergency or whatnot. Um, and then also just like the understanding of um, like emergencies or like things that pop up in our life do happen. Um, and kind of that trust and honesty and kind of transparency with those kind of things um, at least felt like brought kind of trust into, into our relationship as a mentor and mentee. And um, I think just the transparency and um, discussion and like the safe space is kind of what, what made me feel comfortable and what, um, what I think um, our trust was kind of built on a lot. I agree. And I also found as a mentor, it really was important for me to also feel like I could trust Dita as my mentee because I'm, as a mentor, I also have to, I can't just talk about my best professional life, right? I'm going to talk about the days when I crashed and burned, you know? And, and while I'd like to say that I haven't had any at all in an illustrious career, the reality is that I think we all have days where we think, wow, I really could have done that better, right? So whatever it was. So when we're talking about experiences professionally or academically, um, or even personally, you know, in, in interpersonal um, communication, sometimes there'd be examples when we were talking about communication skills where interpersonal communication with outside of the professional realm came into play. To be able to feel like I was safe with my mentee and being able to say, yeah, so I had this experience that did not go the way I had hoped it would go. Um, or this is something I find really challenging about my career and that I'm still trying to figure out how, how I'm working through that process. And these are some of the things I've learned on the way. Because as a mentor, I'm not, I'm still very much a work in process right, or progress or both. <laughs> and I think that being able to feel like I could be a complete person with Dita was a really important part of feeling like it was a give and take relationship. Thank you for that. Um, talk to me about some things that helped you, maybe outside of just kind of those trust building pieces. Um, what are the things that help make the most of the experience? just maybe functionally even, right? How do you make this work well? So you, I have I have a couple, Dita, should I go first? <laughs> okay. I can go, yeah, go for it, go for okay. it. Okay, so the first one was figuring out when a good time for us to meet was. Um, and so that can be really challenging. And one of the things I realized is that certain times of the week and cer certain days of the week and certain times of the day are better for the people in general, um, and also when you're least likely to be interrupted or have something else come up. And sometimes it takes a couple meetings. Even, I mean, I think it took us, took us a couple times to figure out that Saturday mornings were our, were our time, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to, to break out of a nine to five um, mentorship time 
slot is really important that flexibility i was like saturday morning at 10 o'clock i'm awake <laughs> you know that tends to not be a busy time in my life and i i could do you know once a month on a saturday for an hour it's like having coffee with a friend right i can that's a good time for that the other thing that was really helpful to me is that i took i took notes so they were short notes and i would just sort of after we had a meeting i would sit down and i would just sort of sketch sort of generally what we talked about any assignments or homework that I gave Dita, because I did, <laughs> even though you're not, you don't have to as a mentor, I would say, hey, you might want to look into blah, blah, blah. And I would make a note like, oh, I asked her to look at this thing um, so that I didn't forget. But it also allowed there to be continuity in the conversation because the conversations are happening once a month. And so I would often forget some of the more nuanced details of our conversation if I hadn't taken those quick little notes and then I could more easily follow up. That was sort of two of the functional things that were like really helpful for me. Yeah, yeah. I think for me as a mentee, um, I didn't even know Kendra took notes, um, <laughs> but <laughs> I usually took notes during because she would be naming like recommendations for books and my memory is not skilled enough to remember a book name 10 minutes later. Um, and then I, for one, was also setting reminders. Um, I use a calendar a lot for sending out agendas. And I think for me, just making the agenda quite a bit beforehand and sending it out to Kendra was really helpful just because it like put me on a schedule. And I know Kendra and I still meet um, somewhat regularly now. And I have two notifications and there's always like one pops up on a Saturday morning that's like meeting with Kendra in one week email her and so then I know during that week I'll email her being like are you still free this Saturday um and so just kind of keeping to a schedule is really uh, really helpful and setting reminders just because um, life happens and sometimes you can get really busy um but yeah just notes and scheduling for me especially with those agendas was really helpful mm -hmm. yeah what yeah go ahead Kendra well, and as, as we're sharing these things, I realize, oh, like we just talked about two really useful professional skills, right? One is calendaring appointments and giving yourself a reminder in an, in an amount of time to do something about it. And the second is to take notes in meetings <laughs> because, you know, you know, and so I'm like, oh, these are just really professional development things that you might not do um, if you're having coffee with a friend, right? But in this context, it, I, I think both of us probably, we did our own thing that way. We didn't explicitly discuss it. Um, but it, it did, it did work. So. Yeah. And one of the big pieces of any experiential learning is the process to pause afterwards and reflect, mm -hmm. um, notes really help with that. And I don't, I mean, you probably know this Kendra, but all the students in the catalyst program after each meeting have to send me a reflection on their meeting. Yeah. Um, and they have to talk about, you know, what, how it went and what they learned and if there's anything they're following up on and, and maybe how they're incorporating that to plan for the next meeting. So we do work that into the program um, and there's some support for that structure, but um, just hearing that, that it does work and how it works is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, for other folks who might just be watching tonight or later, the other, um, some mentor student pairs, what they've done for that note-taking piece is um, create like a shared Google Doc which I thought was kind of cool um, because they can add kind of takeaways or notes or ideas as they come up or discussion topics. And it kind of serves as like a running repository of the year, which is kind of fun. Um, so note taking in general, planning ahead in general, and there's some, I think, creative ways to do that too. But, but yeah, definitely important. Um, and uh, like you said, a huge professional development opportunity just to practice those skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, how are we on time? Okay, we've got a little bit of time. Um, what's been your biggest takeaway from engaging in mentoring or how has it impacted you? Um, I talked to some about kind of the, you know, research-based benefits and things that I see, but what's been a highlight for you participating in something like this? Yeah, I can go first. Um, I think kind of looking back at my sophomore year, um, for my second year of college, I the mentorship program not only, I think, for me, made me a lot more comfortable with sending out emails, which is kind of somewhat of a daunting task coming out of high school, in my opinion. It's definitely a shift from talking to your teachers every day to emailing professors and researchers and just scheduling meetings and whatnot. I feel 
like I like you mentioned before, I feel a lot more comfortable um, and a lot more sure of myself when I do those things. Um, but I also think that the program, or at least with my conversation with Kendra, um, I added both my minors with a conversation with her. I think that's my biggest takeaway is just because I had been contemplating what minors I should take and like where I wanted to go with my undergraduate degree. Um, and I was kind of in a standstill of my, my own thoughts um, of like, I don't really know where to go with this. I don't really have anyone to ask too much because of COVID-19. Um, and Kendra was kind of there and she kind of helped me through a process and made me realize that I don't need to just choose one minor, I can do both. So that's what I did. Um, but I think that's kind of my biggest takeaway is just, um, I, yeah, I had a lot of professional, more professional experience and I kind of decided where my undergraduate degree would take me, which is really, really helpful. I think the biggest takeaway I've learned is that I still have so much to learn <laughs> that every time, so every time I'm paired with a mentee, I get to learn about this new magical person, right? And all of the really cool things they do and, and develop an appreciation for, for them as individuals and, you know, um, and I'm always so impressed with at least some aspect of a person. And, um, you know, Dita, this is going to say early on, I was so impressed with your agenda making abilities. They're, they're awesome. And I, I was, you know, and I thought, oh, this is such a, it sounds like such a bureaucratic thing to be impressed by, right? Like who <laughs> wants to walk around saying, I can write a great agenda, but in reality, it's a really valuable skill. And I was just, I was like, wow, Dita's got the agenda down. This is amazing. And she communicates really well. This is also great. Um, but then, I, you know, th there's more to it than that, right? You're more than an agenda and your ability to email. But <laughs> I, I would say that I still have so much to learn about how do I be a better mentor, um, so much to learn about public health, because uh, some of my mentees have not, they've been in other areas than I was in. And so I'm learning in conversations with them about what they're seeing. Public health has changed so much since I was in Oregon, at Oregon State, and also, you know, even since I've been in my career field. So I just, I feel like it's like this sort of like, you know, I just get to take off all these layers and they just keep coming and it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, it's just really cool to have the chance to be there and watch people explore their world. That's really neat. Thank you. And this is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap up our part so we can answer questions from folks who are online, but um, just hearing both of you speak, when I was talking about kind of the research backed benefits. Um, for students and mentees, did those resonate? Did they feel real to you? Um, just the stuff I was sharing online in terms of, you know, confidence and leadership development and, and the pieces that show up, do those feel accurate for you just as participants? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say renewed, like, I'd say like renewed enthusiasm for, for my career, for the field, absolutely, as a yeah. mentor, right? Like every day, like there's a, you know, I think we've all had that moment where we're like, whoa, again, I'm doing this again. Like, oh, okay, I'm doing this again. And then you talk to a mentee who's just so excited and maybe you go research something because you've heard of this thing that might work for them, but you don't really know that much about it. And then you're like, oh, there's this whole other thing I didn't know about or didn't know as much about or didn't really realize how it connected. And then you share that with your mentee and that's, I mean, it's, it's really invigorating. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, yeah, I've learned a lot from Kendra and not just only through my professional skills and um, my competencies, which I have learned and they do, they do apply, but it's just also kind of the interaction that we have and um, just discovering new things about things that I would never have discovered otherwise. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to hold the floor. We've got about 20 minutes left. We've got a handful of folks online. So I would love to um, open it up and see if folks have other questions. So thank you, Amy. Really, really appreciate it. Um, also, thank you, Dita, Kendra. Absolutely amazing. Um, you know, again, folks, if you want to ask some questions, you can use the, uh, the Q&A chat button. But I, I kind of want to start off with something. Amy, this is to you and Kendra to you as well. Um, oftentimes, I think people think of mentorship as I'm going to do that later stage in my career or life, or that's the only time I can really do it. That's the only time I really feel like a value add. Can you dispel that myth if it is a myth? And then like the different kinds of benefits that mentees can see from a mentor at all different stages of life and their career. 
Yeah. Do you yeah, want me to yeah. start with that one, Kendra? Yeah, go <laughs> ahead. So I, so we have, like I mentioned, we've had such a great group of mentors over the years. And it's funny because I get um, that hesitancy from folks at very different levels. Like I'll get somebody who says, I just graduated last year. Does it make sense for me to mentor? Or I'll have someone who say, I just retired. Like, am I even relevant anymore? And the answer is yes, always yes. Um, because everybody, I think you can always learn, right? Especially our students who might be um, either earlier in their undergraduate career or just getting ready to graduate, to have the chance to connect with somebody who has just recently gone through that transition mm -hmm. um, is hugely powerful, <laughs> right? And our folks who have maybe retired from their industry have a whole career's worth of um, history to speak about and challenges and wins and all of those pieces and usually a little more free time, which is a bonus. Um, so I think that, and even, you know, even peer mentorship is hugely powerful. So I don't think that um, there's a one size fits all approach and in the matching process, Actually, students are really involved in that, at least in the Catalyst program, where they get to um, review kind of the experiences that our mentors have and submit who they'd like to work with based on that. Um, and understanding that students do have different questions and interests, and um, but it's all it's all valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say mentorship is saying that you're willing to walk with this person. Right. It doesn't say that you're the best guide available or that, you know, all the things you're going to see together. Or it just says I'm willing to show up and walk with this person and and you don't have to show up for very long. It's an hour a week. I spend more time in line at the grocery store. Or sorry, an hour a month. I spend more time in line at the grocery store than I did talking to Dita right in a month. And so I feel like um, I feel like and it's only because I go to Costco a lot. That's why. So but but like, you know, I. When I first started mentoring, I had not yet been promoted to a supervisor's position. So I was a line, I was line staff, I was field staff. And then I got promoted. And so my, you know, I my 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 career development was something that I could share with my mentees as I was in the process of of you know growing in my own career. And I had very different conversations with each mentee as a result. And it was a really interesting experience for me as well. But I feel like I could still provide guidance even much earlier on in my career. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't see any reason why you should have to wait till the end of your career to share what you know. Wonderful, thank you. That is a great point, Kendra. Yeah, yeah. you have such great energy and perspective yeah. for this. Um, I have a couple of student interns and yeah, they give me such energy and I learn like cool new tools or fun ways to do things. It definitely is a two way street. Um, mm -hmm. We did have um, a, one question and Amy, you may be more aware of this. Um, what other schools offer a similar program to Catalyst or are you aware of other, other schools, other units at OSU that, that does this? Yeah, so uh, I'm, there's a number, I would say, of mentoring programs on campus at OSU. Um, many of them are focused more on, I would say, peer mentorship, um, graduate students and undergraduates, or student faculty mentoring. Um, I think campus-wide, we're fairly unique in that we bring in professional mentors from outside of the university. Um, that's something that is somebody's got some feedback. I don't know if that's me or not. Um, so, so yeah, I think that right now there's a lot of programs, but I'm not familiar with any um, that are specifically kind of professional mentors or alumni mentors. Okay, thank you. Uh, one thing I, I want to be able to ask, and I'm going to ask Dita and then and then Kendra. Um, it's kind of the same question, but you'll you'll see where the differential is. Now, Dita, I'm going to come to you first. Is that advice that you have for mentees that might be nervous or anxious about starting this relationship? Uh, maybe you sat in that same kind of seat, and then the the benefits that um, that you're feeling that might far outweigh that nervousness and anxiousness. That's a very real thing and probably a pretty significant barrier. So talking about that from a mentee perspective. Yeah, I definitely remember the process of setting up my first 
meeting with Kendra. Um, I was very nervous because I only um, I only knew her name. Um, and so there's kind of the aspect of, I don't know if they're like what they do. I mean, I think I, I knew kind of her focus and like her, um, her kind of focus professionally. Um, but I was very nervous to talk to someone that was in public health in a degree that I could, or in an area that I could go into. Um, I think my recommendation would just be that I think mentor, mentors are much more excited to meet you um, than you think going in as a, um, an early undergrad. Um, Kendra was so nice at my first meeting. I went in really nervous and I came out like, wow, that was great. Like, I'm gonna go off into the world and like make my next agenda meeting for next month. <laughs> um, but um, I don't know, I think, I think if you really wanna just kind of lower your anxiety a little, just kind of planning out some questions. Um, I think I planned out a few questions for Kendra at the beginning, kind of just seeing where she was at. And then throughout the program, I got a lot more comfortable, but um, I don't know, I think it's just recognizing that as much as you want to meet them, they want to meet you. Um, and then um, just kind of dipping your toe and um, hoping for the best. But there, Kendra was so nice. And I assume that all the mentors are as well, just because they're so excited to meet you, but you don't think of it as that brilliant when you're in the program. You're mostly like, this is a class. Like, I need to be asking them questions. I need to be doing this and this. Um, but I think it's a lot more conversational than that. And it's a lot more um, personal than that as well. And, and the vulnerability is real on both sides, right? That's, that's probably something that, that Kendra, you can talk to the same question for you, but from the mentor perspective, for those people who mentors, like what are, what are they kind of feeling that negative anxiousness and trying to get over that? Yeah. So I think the thing that I always try to remember, especially about this is that I said yes. Right. So I, what I'm hoping what, what I'm hoping future mentees take from this conversation is, you're being paired with somebody who enthusiastically wants to be your mentor, right? It wasn't like Amy strong armed us, you know, it was like, yes, I want to be a mentor. And so you're looking, you know, you're, you're talking to somebody who's really excited about you and they don't know you yet, but they're really excited about you. Um, um, as a mentor, yeah, there is a moment when you, you think, okay, well, will this person like me? Are we, are we going to get along? Are we going to be compatible? And then I realize I'm a professional and my job is to get along with people, right? I'm a professional in public health, right? So that's a very, like, I have skills to get along with people. And the person who's going to be joining me also has skills to get along with people. We're going to be just fine. And for me, I think that's, that's helpful is to realize that, you know, there's a room of two people and we already have agreed that we're going to get along and move forward together. So it, for me, it, it took out a lot of the anxiety of meeting somebody new for the first time. Um, and then I also realize it's it's going to be a great adventure. We're going to get to explore stuff together. I'm going to get to learn about them. I'm going to get to learn new stuff. For me, that's really exciting. And that fun sort of overrides the anxiety that you might normally and reasonably have. Thank you. Thanks again. Um, we have a question in the Q&A uh, from someone. And we sort of touched on it earlier, Amy, this is for you. Um, we know that the mentors are volunteers and we've talked about a lot of the things that they get out of uh, Kendra in particular has talked a lot about the things that you get out of this relationship. Um, the person is asking if they are recognized in any way for the hours they contribute to the program. Yeah, so um, we do, back when we did in-person events, we always had a fun end of year event and um, I've got coffee mugs and little giveaways and treats that we do to kind of have an end of year celebration. Um, but we actually do have a lot of mentors who are not even local. So even if they want like Kendra, right? Kendra's not an actually in Corvallis. Um, and so I try to do a couple of things. One, um, we actually do, I have a whole other set of communications and support things I do with mentors that I try to keep them up to date and provide opportunities for connection and networking with other mentors. Um, and so I want to make sure that they feel kind of incorporated and valued in that way. Um, in terms of like specifically recognizing hours, one of the things that we started doing a few years ago at the end of the program is to offer a um, digital badge. 
actually, for both um, mentees and mentors. And it's produced by Badger. It has the college logo and the program logo on there. Um, it can be inserted onto a LinkedIn profile. It's all verified so that you can add that and somebody can click on it and it will show that you've contributed a year of mentorship for undergraduate students and leadership development. It has a number of different um, things that the mentors have done in terms of contributions to the college that are formally recognized and can be placed out there kind of in um, social profiles or LinkedIn profiles or e-portfolios, wherever it makes sense. But we do offer a, um, a digital badge to showcase that they've completed the volunteer experience. I hope that helps. Yeah. Yeah. And and I just want to do a brief shine here for Amy. So Amy runs an amazing program. Um, it's super organized. It's really supportively detailed. It's happy. <laughs> I mean, it's it's all of these really great things. The program is a fantastic program, has a great structure, and Amy has worked so hard to continue to build it as an outstanding program. So she's, you know, she's really done an amazing job. And as a result, as a mentor, I don't have to think about any of that, right? I can just show up and have fun. Um, somebody else did 90% of the work and then, you know, Dita does the other you know, <laughs> big chunk. Um, and so I think in that respect, one of the one of the acknowledgements are really nice, but the work is so smooth that it is also feels like a reward to me. Just that I get to do this work feels rewarding. One of the things that I think is is also important to talk about, and Kendra, I'm glad you brought that up, and and that is the way that Amy has grown Catalyst, because Catalyst, being out of the College of Public Health and Human Sciences, and Amy, you know, being an employee at the college. Um, it didn't start off that way. And so, you know, Amy, I, I would love for you to be able to talk a little bit about uh, where Catalyst kind of started off at to where it is at today. Yeah, you know, it probably hasn't been the smoothest five years, but um, you've grown it into this thing where now like you have almost your own alumni base, both from mentees and mentors and probably mentees that want to be mentors. Yeah, it's been a, a labor of love, right? Um, I was actually, my my position in the college as director of student engagement um, was, was new when I came into it. Um, and part of the expectation for this role was to kind of lead and develop this mentoring program. There was an idea, um, the Alumni Association was actually really looking for ways to get alumni more involved in ways that didn't um, require only like financial contributions, right? Like how to give back to the college in a way that's really meaningful. Um, and they wanted somebody to, to do something with it. So when we started, I came in just after they matched the first cohort. So I wasn't actually there for the initial matching and design. I came in a few months later and kind of stepped in right like January, first week of January, I think in that first year. Um, and it looked a lot different um, and not, not bad different, just different, right? It was kind of co-curricular at that point. Um, students were matched up manually on the back end by staff here in the college. Um, and, and there was an, an option for students to get a certificate of completion, um, which we still give out even though they earn credit. We do a certificate of completion and a batch for students as well. Um, and, and they just had to, they had a handbook and they had to check in after each monthly meeting to provide a, a meeting reflection. And if they finished the program, they would get the certificate. Um, and it worked well for some people, but we actually had a huge amount of attrition that first year. Um, we had a ton of students who were interested and really just not enough support um, for both sides, I think, in that way to encourage the continued involvement. Um, so we lost about 70% of our students that first year. We did not make it the full year. Um, and then we've continued to develop. We created a, a, a more robust, um, we, that's what we call a zero credit program where they weren't paying for it, they weren't earning credit, but it was still showing up on the transcript as a leadership development activity. Um, we incorporated some lighter like coursework and modules and, and just structure. Um, and then three years ago now, we created a whole curriculum to offer it for credit. So students earn one credit per term. Um, it's, there's a lot more involvement with mentors that's also developed over the years in terms of communication and opportunities. Um, and, and this year, comparatively, so our first year, I think we completed 29 students who made it the full year. Um, and this year we're looking at 89% of students are gonna complete the full year. 
And so it's really been right reflective on my part, right? Any experience is that reflection and assessment and iterative. Um, and we just keep taking as much feedback as we can get and incorporating that in hopefully meaningful ways. And I think it's um, we've done we've done good with that. Yeah, it's been a growing process. That's amazing, and congratulations on the success of the program. That's absolutely incredible. I mean, we're seeing you know a couple of, of byproducts of that, and, and the relationship that's very evident. But uh, Kendra and, and relation and data, their relationship on camera is, is very genuine. So, like, it's a byproduct of your work with the program. Um, last one. Let's get out on for today. Um, this one's to all three of you. You know, one of the things that Catherine and I love about the Public Health Insider series is kind of like action items and next steps. But you know, and I'll leave it up to the three of you and I'll, you know, Amy, I'll start with you and like advice for, you know, either mentors or mentees, you know, kind of going forward about, you know, are there resources, are there, you know, are there trainings out there outside of the program, things that you've heard about or other different ways that, you know, to get involved. I know, Amy, you talked about obviously with people with the public health and human sciences background getting involved with Catalyst, but um, any kind, again, advice, words of wisdom, action items, things that you think would be relevant for either mentor or, or mentees? You know, I would just say um, there's so many resources out there. I don't know if I could like make a short list on the spot, um, but sure. search for them, right? Like there's there's all kinds of um, tools and groups and resources around mentoring, even just YouTube videos and things like that. Um, but use your networks, right? The OSU Connections is great. LinkedIn is great. Um, let people know that you're available and i would say just be willing to get a little comfortable with being uncomfortable and trying something new right um that's what it's all about is 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 there is a sense of vulnerability there right um and but i would say that the biggest thing is if you're going to go into it especially as a, a mentor also as a mentee but as a mentor if you're going to give this a go um be ready to commit to it um, because um, it is a, a special level of support that students get um, that is very different than talking with an instructor or a supervisor or a parent or a family member. It removes some of those power dynamics when you have somebody who is literally just here to support you. They have no stake in your job or your grade or your class. Um, and so, but to make that really, to have that impact, you have to be willing to stick with it um for at least a little while so yeah just give it a try excellent amy kendra what about you i would just remind people that you have a lot to give um and that you you may not even know what it is yet right so time is part of it but it's not really just time like like amy said it's a commitment to be to be present in somebody's life for a certain period of time and to listen to them and to help them come up with creative solutions for their specific situation. I'm not, one of the things I like best about mentoring <laughs> in many ways is that, as Amy said, I'm not responsible for what Dita or anybody else does with that information, right? I can, I, that, that sort of, in my experience, it's been often a rare experience as a professional where I could not always, you, know, you don't always have to be in charge of the situation. And, and it's just a real gift as a professional to be with another coworker or, or you know, with a mentee um, and not, not have to worry so much about the outcome because your job is just to be there with them. Um, that, that's kind of a unique experience and it's really enlightening and it's also really freeing in many ways. So I would say that, you know, potential mentors, you you have a tremendous amount to give and potential mentees, there is just so many opportunities to learn from somebody who's willing to share with you, right? That you don't need to feel like, like you're not worth it or, you know, well, somebody else deserves that more. And the answer is no, you're a good enough reason to do this. You get to do this for you, right? Um, that would that would be what I would say to both, both sides. Wonderful. Kendra, Dita, take us home. What do you got? Um, I think off the top of my head, I think, um, especially if you're a mentee, mostly is just uh, reaching out to your advisors and your peer advisors. Um, I know public health has a really great um, peer advisor program that you can always reach out to. Um, and it's kind of just talking student to student and seeing kind of their perspective and their recommendations as well. Um, and they're always always there, always available. 
Um, and then also just kind of taking a chance, um, kind of popping off what Kendra was saying is that um, I think we gain a lot of um, value and a lot of experience that I wasn't even aware of that I would gain um, through the program. And I just think taking that step and taking a chance, um, the program has been tremendously helpful and wonderful, so. Thank you both so much. Um, I'm so glad it was such a great experience for both of you. Um, Dita, I'm glad it really was successful for you. And I can definitely see why uh, Amy invited Kendra to participate in this conversation. You definitely, you get you get a lot out of this. I hope it inspired somebody to, to be a mentor. It really, it really is um, a great sort of inspiring and confidence builder for the mentor too. And yeah, I can't say enough about it either. So um, anyway, to wrap up, um, again, just want to thank you all. Big thanks to Amy, Kendra, Dita for sharing your knowledge, your stories, your time. I know time is precious. So I really, we really appreciate that. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Catalyst within our college, it's health.oregonstate.edu backslash Catalyst. So check it out. This episode uh, concludes the full 2021-22 season of the Public Health Insider Series. This series will be returning in the fall for its next season, so please stay tuned to the series site at fororegonstate.org slash PHI, which stands for Public Health Insider, for updates on upcoming episodes. You can also catch up on and share any episode from the entire season that you may have missed, including rewatching tonight's episode once it is posted in a couple of days. We also post those videos um, of each of the episodes on the Synergies, which is the college's uh, news site, which is synergies.oregonstate.edu. Each attendee will receive an email from me tomorrow that includes items on more ways which you can connect to OSU, including how to join OSU Connections to use as a platform for mentorship with fellow beeves, and a brief survey about tonight's event. We appreciate that if you could take a moment to fill that out so we can continue to bring you the programming from the college and the alumni association that you are interested in. Casey and I thank you for joining us tonight and we look forward to hosting each of you again when the series returns in the fall. Until then, we hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.